Larry Kudlow with us right now, the host of our hugely popular Kudlow show, former economic advisor to President Trump. Larry, I mean, obviously, every time we look at these inflationary numbers, uh, you know, the politicians got to say, what can we do about it? It's one thing to talk about lowering prescription drug costs or using the full weight of the government to, to, to force that. What do you think of that approach? I think that whole bill is a terrible idea. What's in that bill, you, you have at least, from what I gather, at least a trillion dollars worth of social spending and a trillion dollar tax hike to pay for it. I think it's, a, you know, the spending is inflationary and the tax hike will bury the economy into a deeper recession. The combination is lethal. I, I hope Mitch McConnell uh, stays tough and hangs tough. This whole thing is a terrible idea right now. All right, I'll put you down as a maybe on it. Um, <laughs> it you know, Larry, I was, I was just thinking, you know, uh, talking to a number of administration officials of late, um, they, they seem to say we're doing all we can, uh, but, but to a man or woman, they seem to be hoping it takes care of itself, just as we've been seeing prior to today, uh, you know, the rundown in interest rates, market rates, the rundown in energy prices, gas prices, oil prices. Even though we're up even today over $103 a barrel, I'm sure they will point to the fact that it was at $128 a barrel uh, just a couple of months ago. So that, that they think the effect of higher prices has been lower prices, that, that it has sapped demand, and that is doing the trick. What do you think of it? I don't think that uh, those wishes are going to pan out. Um, inflation is probably even worse I mean, when you look at the inflation, for example, of non-durable goods, it's rising at a double-digit rate. Uh, durable goods rising uh, at a lower but still double-digit rate. Inflation is very sticky. Inflation expectations, Neil, are becoming embedded. You see it in the labor market. Uh, you see it in these consumer surveys, Conference Board, Michigan, and so forth. It's going to be a tough battle. There's no easy way out. Now, I um, two points. In the commodity markets, it looks like we've seen a peak, okay? I, I don't think it's crashing down, but it looks like we've seen a peak. Um, that won't filter through, you know, in the PPI, for example, wholesale prices for about a year. But it's a good signal that the Fed has had a good start. Uh, and I do believe the Fed will go 75 in July and another 75 mm. in September. They're going to have to. Neil, another, wait, another 75 in September on top of that? Yeah. Yes. Interesting. I mean, yeah. look, at you've got to get, um, at a minimal, you've got to try to get the policy rate above the inflation rate. Right. And I don't think the, you know, the basic, if the Fed is watching, you know, this PCE deflator, uh, which is running about 6%, 12 month change, I think the core is about five, five and a quarter percent. So in theory, you would want to get the Fed's policy rate uh, above, you know, above 5%, probably to 6%. So they still have a, a lot of work to do. Yeah. But what, may, may I make one point? Please. In the world oil market, I think the biggest change is that Russia is now producing uh, at pre-war levels again. Uh, in round numbers, Neil, Russia was moving 10 million barrels uh, a day pre-war, okay? Then when the sanctions came in and everybody pulled back, it dropped to about 9 million barrels a day. So that's a big drop. And that had a, you know, that's what drove up prices. Now, look at India and China, who violated the sanctions, are buying Russian oil. And so Russian oil production is back up to about 10 million barrels a day, maybe slightly more. Now, that's given some relief uh, to the world oil market. So the prices have slipped down. Uh, it's an unfortunate story, in my judgment. Uh, but nonetheless, that's India. Here's one for you. India was buying uh, 70,000 uh, barrels per day from Russia pre-war, 70,000. Uh, as of the middle of June, uh, India had upped it to over a million barrels a day purchased from Russia. So there's your million right there. And we don't know what China's doing. 
We have no idea because there's no numbers, and they're not going to tell us. But we do us. know that China wants to pick up the slack for the business that Russia's losing, so they're in bed together. Yes. Uh, speaking of oil, Larry, we're, we're getting some word now, a little more detail from John Kirby at the White House of what the president's plans are uh, when he goes to Saudi Arabia, that he is going to meet with the Saudi king. That will include a one-on-one -on -one, uh, with the Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman. Uh, and, and we're told, uh, even though oil is not part of these discussions, that he expects the Saudis to open up the spigot more. They have a little bit, but not nearly enough. What do you think comes of it? Not much. Not much. I mean, the Biden foreign policy uh, has been so anti-Saudi, anti-Abraham Accords, anti-Israel, and they're still trying to make a nuclear deal with Iran. Uh, it's just one of the craziest things I, I've ever seen. Uh, now, these Gulf states, by the way, are producing pretty close to capacity. There might be a little more, a couple hundred thousand barrels available. But I don't think you'll see Saudi Arabia do much. They don't really want to help Joe Biden. So, you, you've read the reports. Saudi Arabia is now working with Israeli intelligence uh, to try to stem the terrorism in the, in the Middle East and the Iranian terrorism, which is the principal uh, source of it. Uh, I, I don't know for the life of me, and almost every foreign policy person I know uh, in both parties uh, do not understand why this administration is still uh, talking to Iran about another deal. I mean, I just don't get it. Uh, I think it's the worst thing in the world. But, you know, the point is the relief in the world oil market is coming, as you said, from China, as I noted, from India. Uh, that's letting... Uh, Basically, you've put at least a million barrels back on the world oil market. So when that supply increases, the prices come down. Uh, whether it continues to come down remains to be seen. Right. But the, the Biden shouldn't count on that. Um, gasoline is a particular problem, Neil, because of the refinery. They're running at 95, 96 percent capacity. And um, the administration uh, will not provide, will not allow any permits uh, to, first of all, to drill or frack, second of all, uh, to pipeline, and third of all, for refining. Now, the Supreme Court decision last week um, may work some magic, but it's going to take a while for that to hit. So we're at capacity here because Mr. Biden has opposed fossils, you know, from the day he was elected and opposed it during the campaign. So gasoline, which has eased down a wee bit, um, I don't think it's going to come down much and could pop back up. We'll see. So let me ask you, and let's circle back very quickly, if you don't mind, Larry, to this commodity uh, pressure easing a little bit. And it, it, it's not the entire group, but I'm including copper and wheat and tin and corn and barley and all this other stuff. Uh, but, but they're down 20 percent, even with the advance today from their highs. And I know you said that could presage something that'll pop up maybe in the PPI to produce a price index, wholesale inflation. But uh, I'm just wondering, from your days at the White House, but more importantly, we're way back when you follow this stuff on Wall Street and, and those days of Bear Stearns, I mean, did you look at that as a preview to coming attractions, whether up or down, to the general inflation rate? And I'm just curious, uh, did we see a break in those same commodity prices, uh, you know, uh, uh, during and then later uh, with the Paul Volcker increases in rates. And that, that, that is where it starts. So it's starting now. Do you buy that? I do. I mean, look, you know, uh, a, great, a great friend and a brilliant guy, former Federal Reserve Governor Wayne Angel, Sure. Uh, he really taught me uh, about the commodity price rule. Uh, Neil, when you look at that, there's a couple of important indexes. There's the CRB spot, there's the CRB futures, uh, you know, Bloomberg or S&P, uh, blah, blah. They're all showing the same thing, and I think you're right. They're down about 20 percent. So in a commodity price rule world, that suggests the very beginning, the Fed is now on the right track. Um, we're not seeing commodity deflation. What we're seeing is uh, it's coming off the highs, but the highs were pretty high. And if you trace the chart, you'll see it just shoots way up, uh, you know, from late 2020 um, to a peak uh, maybe a month ago. It's, so the commodity... Now, the Fed should be guided by that, okay? 
um, they're on the right track. That's what I think the commodities are telling them. Okay. Uh, it's not so much that they're going to filter into the PPI, but they will at some point, you know, later on. It's really a price signal. It's a price signal that the dollar is gaining strength against real assets and commodities. It's a lost art, you know. Manly, jo remember Neil, you were, you know, you covered it. Wayne Angel, Manly Johnson, Robert Heller. I've had Heller wow. on our show Blast a couple times. Blast from the past, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And those guys were Reagan appointees, and uh, working with Alan Greenspan, another Reagan appointee, um, they really created the basis for the price stability that lasted, I don't know, three decades plus. And I think that the discipline, you remember Greenspan, at, Neil, Greenspan used to go before Congress and talk about gold. That's I love right. that. I just, it, you know, it always titillated me. It just sent a chill down my <laughs> you were spine. You're always a genius, Larry. You were, I always just, <laughs> now, I always remember about Greenspan, he would say, if you have understood my testimony, I have failed. Um, <laughs> so, uh, Larry, yes. always good seeing you, my friend. Uh, see you in about two hours on your hit show, Cudlow, uh, 4 p.m. Eastern Time.